Hello, I'm Russell with the Piano Outlet, and uh, right now I'm going to show you how the piano is calibrated once all the hardware is installed in the piano and set up like it needs to be set up. The first thing that we do on our calibration is we set all the volume levels to the keys to the lowest possible power setting to achieve a note strike. The reason for this is so when you play the piano with a low volume, all the keys will play and you won't get any missing notes. That's the whole idea. So what happens is that I'm going to get underneath the piano, I'm going to work with the IQ box, set each note that has a solenoid, and I want to explain what that means. Because on these pianos I leave off the last four notes on either side, because if you see underneath the piano, the solenoid are housed in this unit here uh, in this pan. If I extended the solenoids to play all the notes in the piano, I would have to cut the leg. And in the interest of keeping the piano as original as possible, I would rather not cut the leg and just leave out four solenoids on either side because it just doesn't make any sense. There's very, very little music that you're ever going to see those notes played and you're not going to miss them. So rather than damage the leg, I just leave them out. So in order to calibrate the piano for the lowest possible note setting, we move to the IQ box. And over here you're going to see the uh, LED over the light learn. So we're going to teach the solenoids the lowest possible value. So I'm going to move the thumb wheel over to learn. I'm going to press it in. I'm going to move it until I start hearing a solenoid strike. I actually calibrated this a little bit before, so it's actually set the way we have to set it. So I'm going to move it up so you can hear the difference. That's going to be too loud. We really want to keep it as low as possible. So I'm going to go down. So just move the thumb wheel to minus. And that's about the level that you really want. Press it in to keep it and go to the next note. That's already set from before. We want to give this one a little bit more power. Press the thumb wheel in. Press plus. Save it. Go to the next one. Now you don't even hear a note because there's very, very little power going to that one. So you're going to raise that up. And then when you're done getting all the notes done, you want to press and hold the thumb wheel in. You'll see all the notes blink, and that means it's saved all the values. Sometimes something happens when you will lose these settings, and you'll have to do that yourself, and it's a lot nicer to know that you can do it yourself rather than have to hire somebody to come in and do it for you. The next step in the calibration is the piano disc silent drive setup CD, which we have installed in this computer and we can access it through iTunes, and it's a, a bunch of different tests that uh, we do to set the calibration of different parameters of the piano. The first one that we do is the note hold force, and that means uh, the amount of power that the solenoids have to hold the notes up. Now, one thing that we won't, don't want to see is, a, uh, well, you'll see, I'm going to press, I'm going to start the, uh, Keyhole force default. I'm going to press the instructions so you can actually hear. Pedal strike force instructions. Nope. That's the pedal. This is the note hold. Hold force instructions. Hold force adjusts between 0 and 90 in each section. Each test sequence will set the hold force as indicated and then play a chord for 5 seconds in that section. This permits time to check the keys for proper hold force. As before, when the key is lifted during hold, the key should drop back without causing the string to sound again. In all of the following hold force adjustments, wait for the chord to finish playing before going to the next track. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press the default. Keyhole force default. It's going to set the default setting from the factory. 
The CD has set all the whole forces to the default value of 60. Now we want to see how it behaves, so I'm going to raise it one point. Tenor key hold force increased by one. The CD has increased the hold force of the tenor section by one. Now watch the piano. If I lift here and it doesn't, the hammer doesn't strike, that's a good thing. That's where we, we need to Press go. stop now. I'm going to increase it just one more to show you again. Tenor key hold force increased by one. The CD has increased the whole force of the tenor section by one. That's just where we want it, okay? If I were to add ten more points to it, per what would happen is that when I lift up from that chord, the hammer would strike the string again, and that's not what we want. So the whole force for the notes are right now set at the correct parameter. The next thing that we want to do is we want to set the pedal solenoid. So we're going to go to the pedal solenoid strike force. That's the amount of energy that the pedal solenoid strikes with. We're going to set that to the default. <coughs> pedal strike force decreased by one. Oh, no, we want default. Sorry. I pressed the wrong one. Here we go. Pedal strike force default. The CD has set the pedal strike force to the default value of 100. Now, what we look for is that when the pedal solenoid fires, that we're not hearing a loud clunk. It's not pushing down with so much force and getting a clunk. Now, since I've been doing this, I've done so many of these, I kind of know how to set them up right away the first time out so that when I set it at the default, it's exactly right. So you see the down, when press the default, and you're going to see the dampers go up, and it's not a good Pedal sound. Pedal strike default. The CD has set the pedal strike force to the default value of 100. As you can tell, it was totally silent. So that's what we're looking for. If it was, if there was a noise, like a clunk, we would reduce the strike force. Okay? If the pedal, uh, if the damps came up and they, and they were like, they didn't come up that strongly, then you would have to add more to the strike force. So that's actually right where it should be. The next thing that I'm going to set is the pedal hold force, and that's the amount of time that the dampers stay in the up position. I'll play the piano disc instructions so you can hear. Pedal hold force instructions. Look for the dampers to rise to maximum height and stay firm without sagging. Then increase the setting by four. Pedal hold force adjusts from 0 to 120. Setting the hold force too high will cause the pedal solenoid to overheat. In all of the following pedal hold force adjustments, wait for the pedal to rise and then hold. Press stop now. So we're going to do default, the pedal hold force. Pedal hold force default. The CD has set the pedal hold force to the default value of 90. So as you see, it came up, and it held up, and then it let down after five seconds, okay? So Proportional pedal setup. That's exactly the way you want it to be. I don't really need to make any other adjustments to this, so I'm just going to leave it at the default setting. But if you were to have seen the dampers go up and then start sagging down, then you would have to have had to add more hold force. So right now it's perfect, okay? That's really the three things that you're going to use on this setup CD. And then if you
you wanted to test the dampers, if you wanted to make an adjustment, there is a track here. Other things that you can do here, like for instance, there is the damper test. Let's try the damper test here. Where is it? Damper test. I'll play the instructions so you can hear it. Damper test instructions. Manual adjustment should be made prior to setting the pedal solo mode. The adjustment on a grand piano should have a minimum amount of free play between the damper tray and the underlevers. On a vertical piano, this adjustment would be the same. While the damper test is running, please note that all that is needed for the adjustment of the pedal solenoid is to lift the dampers to achieve sustain. The bi and tri chords should just be out of the string. If minimum levels are set both in the manual and solenoid... Okay, what that means is when the... Um Dampers rise up, they need to only rise up about this much, okay? They don't need to go up this much, just about this much, maybe about a quarter of an inch, just so that they release the string. And the reason for that is you, you just don't want so much travel because more travel will mean more noise, okay? So, if I press the test, which is track number 46, you'll see they go up and down. with no noise. That's something I'm proud of because uh, right off the bat we just set this piano up and it's, it's acting actually just perfectly. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a, a song on here to see how the piano behaves for the first time. I actually am going to play something very challenging for the piano with a lot of repeated notes and I'm going to work the volume and see just how softly I can get it to play. And I'm going to be using this uh, piece by Chopin. It's called La Campanella, and it is track number 53. It's starting to play. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise the volume of the piano up, the piano knob, little by little. And I don't do that with a, just a turn. I move it about an eighth of an inch and wait to see what I have. List. explain that it's not playing exactly properly right now because if you remember when I set all the notes underneath the piano I didn't set all the notes I was supposed to set all the notes but I only set a few so after I set all of the, the lowest volume levels on the IQ then I go back and play this piece and it'll play really soft at a low volume and it will play perfectly so that's about it for the uh, calibration or for the piano disc setup CD. And uh, the setup CD is available if you want it. Uh, just make sure you ask me. Sometimes I forget to send them, and uh, it's uh, mostly it's the technicians that have them. But if you want to be able to do your own uh, calibration, you should have them. Thank you very much for watching.